<laughs> hey, everybody, welcome back to the next episode. And today our guest is Jane Valez Mitchell. And I got the middle of her name right, didn't I? Yes, I yes. like it. Well. <laughs> She's the founder and content editor of Unchained TV, a multi-platform social media news outlet that produces original video content on animals' rights and the vegan and compassionate lifestyle. Uh, Jane has won four Genesis Awards uh, from the Humane Society of the United States for her reporting on animal issues. Thank you for your work, by the way. Vegan News named Velez Mitchell Media Maven of the Year in 2010. In 2013, Mercy for Animals awarded her the Compassionate Leadership Award. In 2014, she was honored for fighting animal abuse, I love it, by the, uh, by the Animal Legal Defense Fund. In 2015, she re received the Nancy Alexandra Award at PETA's 35th anniversary. Now, I could go on on her bio, to be honest, because it's long, so that'd be like 30 minutes right there, so I'm not going to, because <laughs> she's done a lot, that means. So welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm delighted to be here. Awesome. And I love the idea of compassion. That's what I'm all about. That's right, man. That's what we all got to get together to change the world. So tell us a little bit about you. How did you get to where you are today and then exactly what's going on today? Well, I was in mainstream media for four decades. I don't know if I should reveal that, but it's the truth. So I grew up in Midtown Manhattan, went to NYU, then uh, had jobs around the country as a local news anchor reporter. I ended up uh, working in New York, my hometown, as an anchor reporter. Then I got a job in L.A., worked here as an anchor reporter. And then somewhere along the line, <clears throat> I had already uh, been a vegetarian and I was raised in a primarily pescatarian household. We did not bring meat into the house, right. but I was kind of a half-assed vegetarian. And then in walked this man uh, to the Paramount Studios, where I was a TV news host, and I um, his name was Howard Lyman. He had been on Oprah and he was a fourth generation cattle rancher who had become very ill and he made a pact with God. He said, God, if you get me out of this surgery, I will reveal the horrors of my industry, the meat and dairy industry. Wow. He went on Oprah. He had a book called Mad Cowboy. She famously said that just stopped me cold from eating another burger when he described, you know, the babies ripped from the mothers and the veal crates and the boys left to die. And it's a it's a it's a. I hate to be rude, but it is a rape, abduction, and murder operation. None of these animals are making love on these factory farms. The babies have to be taken away from the mothers if we're going to steal the milk. And um, the boys are, uh, there's no use for them in the dairy industry. They get turned into veal or they get left to die on dead piles. So he said all this. She said, that just stopped me cold from eating another burger. Then the cattleman sued her. This is a quarter of a century ago, at least. And anyway, he became famous for 15 minutes. Howard Lyman, the mad cowboy, he walked into the studio. I interviewed him. And afterwards, he came up to my desk and said, I hear you're a vegetarian. I said, yes. He said, well, do you eat dairy? And I kind of hung my head because he had talked about the, the horrors of the dairy industry, which right. is, you know. And I said, yes. And he said, liquid meat. Point his finger right in my nose. Liquid meat. And at that moment, I went vegan. I've never tasted meat or uh, dairy after that. I was already not, not eating meat. And it transformed my life. It just it changed everything. I, I just felt like reborn in a way. Um, it's not a sacrifice. It's an adventure. And as soon as that started happening, I started looking at everything differently. So remember in the newsroom, they were putting glue traps down to trap uh, mice. And I said, don't do that. I said that, you you know, these animals get stuck in the glue trap and they die of thirst and hunger and it's torture. I started removing the glue traps and people thought I was crazy. You know, they, they, what the hell are you doing? And then I would refuse to read the rodeo story at the kicker uh, of the newscast uh, that, that that was something fun. The only reason those animals jump up is because they tie their gonads and it's yeah. torture. I said, I'm not going to read it. So of course I was becoming a, a troublesome <laughs> person because I was challenging authority, because yeah, I was yeah. looking at what was accepted and saying there's something morally wrong with this. So at that point, I decided- Especially, especially in that industry. Oh yeah, you're, you're supposed to, as one of the news directors said, stick to the copy. Yeah. That's yeah. a direct quote. Um, so uh, I realized I can use my skills as a journalist 
uh, to help animals. And that was the thing I started doing. And it, be, it quickly became the most important thing because it's not just helping animals, it's helping people. Uh, people who eat meat, it's processed meat is cancer causing according to the World Health Organization. So it's like eating, it's like smoking cigarettes. Um, you know, heart disease kills one out of every four people. Look at the pandemic. You know, the scientific community concluded recently it started at the Wuhan market, which is a slaughterhouse. So eating animals causes pandemics. It causes, excuse me, <coughs> it's cause I get very excited when I talk about this. <laughs> eating animals causes pandemics. It causes heart disease, the leading killer. It causes cancer. It, the fast food, meat and dairy laden diet is costing us hundreds of billions of dollars in healthcare costs. It's leading to a 40% obesity rate. I mean, I could go on all day. World hunger with animals, farmed animals, 80 billion land animals eating most of the food. Kids are going hungry in third world countries. We have ocean desertification. We have drought. A vegan diet saves at least 300 gallons of water a day per person. Um, the average meat burger costs 450 gallons of water to produce. I, I could just go on all day. And so my dilemma is like, well, they, they won't let me talk about this. I'm in the media, but they won't let me talk about this. And uh, so ultimately, while I, by hook or by crook, did a lot of stories uh, when I was at Celebrity Justice, when I was at uh, CNN Headline News, HLN, they let me do a weekly animal segment where I covered some of these serious issues. So when that wrapped up, I said, this is what I'm going to do full time. I'm going to start my own network and we're going to get the truth out because we're not beholden to advertisers, which are primarily fast food and pharmaceuticals. Wow. That's why they don't talk about it. It's very simple. Always follow the money. So we have Unchained TV, which is a nonprofit news network. And it is also a global streaming network where we have a new show, uh, a reality show called Pig Little Lies, the world's first reality show starring a family of pigs. Episode three just dropped. It's a mini series. Each episode's about a dozen minutes long and it's absolutely adorable. It follows uh, a mama and a papa pig who were in a kill shelter set to die. We rescue them and then dramedy ensues as we find out that mama's pregnant and the piglets come along and all hell breaks loose, but it's a lot of fun. Wow, that sounds like actually a pretty cool show. It is, Pig Little Lies, you gotta check it out. And the thing is, Unchained TV is completely free. We're a nonprofit. We're not doing this to make money. I don't take a salary. Um, we are just trying to wake people up that it's these animals are so smart. Pigs are smarter than dogs. And why are we torturing them? What? So we can have a slice of bacon? Well, guess what? There's Hooray Foods makes a vegan bacon that's absolutely delicious. They, they can mimic impossible meat burgers. Impossible food burgers taste just like meat. Uh, in fact, sometimes I... I I say to the waiter, I say, are you sure this is a vegan burger? Because it looks like meat, it smells like meat. In taste tests, they can't tell the difference. So if you can do something that's better for your health, better for the animals, better for the planet, why wouldn't you do it? That's our main thing. And it's not a sacrifice. When you are exhibiting compassion, you win yep. as well. 100%, 100%. You know, and I love the fact of, you know, you said like with pigs, you know, a lot of people don't understand that, that, that animals, they feel and, and just like a human does. Of course, and anybody with a dog, your dog is a multifaceted personality. Every single pig is just the same, exactly. just the same. Every cow is just the same. They have their quirks. They have their individuality up. Oh, there's the thought police calling me right now. <laughs> You know, let me tell you, share a quick story with you. Before, at, in my early days of hockey, I worked on a dairy farm. It was one of my hockey's coaches, one of my, 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 my coaches in my hockey team. And big, big dairy farm. So, I, you know, I wasn't vegan then. You know, I was young and knew, I knew nothing about any of this, right? But what I did learn was there was two cows that would always wait to the very end to be milked. Always at the very end. Would never get milked before. And they would always want to be petted by me and they would play and they would like be feisty and, and just wait. And I got so close to the one that the one would end up putting its head down and I could sit on its back on its neck and it would bring me up and put it on his back. 
and that's what a connection that that we had and that's where i first started to really be like wow like these this was like hanging out with a human it was amazing absolutely and everybody who says well you know it's dairy they've got to milk the cows no um, the truth is that, as I said before, they're all artificially inseminated. The second that baby is born, that baby has to be removed from the mother. Otherwise, the baby would drink the milk that nature intended for the baby. We are not intended to drink cow's milk, the breast milk of a cow. It is unnatural. We've been yeah. sold a bill of goods. There's more calcium in orange juice. There's more calcium in tons of vegetables. We've been sold a bill of goods, and actually the global majority is lactose intolerant. Um, the National Institutes of Health says that lactose intolerance is rampant in our um, society. Right. So if, if there's something that most people are allergic to, why are we forcing it down their throats? Kids often have to get a doctor's note at school in order to say, I don't want to drink cow's milk with my lunch, they put it right there. Why? Because the meat, dairy and pharmaceutical industry has co-opted government. The USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture is run by a dairy industry trade group leader, Tom Vilsack. Right. And it's his second go at being USDA secretary. So is he going to look at it objectively and say, wow, uh, a vast percentage of our population is allergic to dairy. Let's offer them oat milk, uh, almond milk, rice milk, hemp milk, soy yeah. milk, all the other milks that exist. No, he's going to go do everything he can to push dairy. Meanwhile, animal agriculture is destroying our environment. Uh, it's the most use of agricultural land is used for animal agriculture. And wherever you see grazing land, that's where trees have been removed to provide grazing land. And right. therefore, there aren't trees absorbing carbon. What reduces temperature? What absorbs carbon? Trees. We are destroying trees in the Amazon and elsewhere uh, to create grazing land for cattle or to grow crops to feed 80 billion animals. One of the things I do when I talk to somebody who knows nothing about this, I say, how many land animals, not including fish, do you think we kill every year on this planet for food to eat? Oh, I don't know, 10 million, 100 million, 80 billion. We are eight billion humans raising in industrialized torture, chopping off their tails, chopping off their gonads without any anesthesia, um, you know, right, hanging right. them up by one leg and slitting their throats. There's no nice way to kill a being who, and I always say who, doesn't want to die. And, and the, the systems are industrialized torture. I've seen it myself. I could right. testify in a court of law. I see these these pigs coming frothing at the mouth without food or water for 48 hours in these trucks, terrified baby pigs. They kill them when they're six months old, approximately. And, and all of it's creating all these problems, all of these problems. So people go, well, it's a personal choice. Well, not really, because the government is spending hundreds of billions of dollars to subsidize that personal choice. If the average hamburger was 10 to $25, people would be choosing uh, a cheaper option, which would be the plant-based alternatives, which are not being subsidized by the government. Yeah, it's true. So what do you think are the most, what do we need to do to create changes in this? What are some tips you can do? Like, where do we, and do you think we're going to be able to do it in the next 50 years? 50 years. I just did a documentary that's on Unchained TV called Countdown to Year Zero. And right. it profiles Dr. Silas Rao who worked at Intel for 20 years. He is a genius. He was instrumental in the acceleration of the internet speeds. Uh, he says we have to go global vegan culture by 2026 to avoid a climate apocalypse. Okay. Yeah. That's a couple of years. Okay. Right. And as Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. This is why I created Unchained TV. And I know it seems obnoxious to keep putting this up there, <laughs> but you're not getting this from the mainstream media. Okay, the New York Times did a story on February 27th where they said the scientific community has overwhelmingly concluded that the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic started at the wet market in Wuhan, China. And they quoted many scientists saying, you know, the evidence is overwhelming. It's crystal clear when you look at it, blah, blah, blah. Crickets, no coverage of that. Right. Uh, now, that has disrupted our lives. Millions of people have died. I spent two years in this apartment 
You know, you, yeah. I'm sure everybody's exactly. lives were shattered. So why didn't they cover that? Do you know that the mainstream media does not use the word slaughterhouse? When COVID-19 swept through the slaughterhouses in the United States, as well as Canada, and uh, the slaughterhouse workers who are killing in a very tight, you know, that Oxfam says that slaughterhouse workers often have to wear diapers because they get so few bathroom breaks. We're not just exploiting people. We're running around in our Lululemon yoga pants saying how peaceful we are while we're paying people to kill for eight hours a day. And it's giving them depression, alcoholism, and everything from carpal tunnel system uh, uh, syndrome to, to suicidal ideation because it's no fun to kill animals for eight hours a day. Wow, and wow. that people on the lowest level of society who just come in here, immigrants, people who just got out of prison, they get the people who have fewest choices and they get them in there to kill so that we can run around talking about how peaceful and loving we are while we're subsidizing industrialized torture. It's time for people to wake up. That's why I started Unchained TV, because I was behind the curtain. I was in mainstream media. Yeah. You will not hear this, okay? You will not hear this because look at the commercials, fast food and pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceutical industry, which has more lobbyists on Capitol Hill than any other industry would collapse if people started eating healthy fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains, and legumes. Right. The statins, the cholesterol lowering drugs, the erectile dysfunction drugs, now the dementia. Oh, I can't remember anything. See, yeah. because when cholesterol enters your system and the vessels in your system, it doesn't just go to the heart. Heart disease is America's leading killer pandemic aside, which right. is arteries to the heart getting clogged with plaque. Plaque comes from cholesterol. Cholesterol only exists in animal products. We're animals, so we produce our own cholesterol. So in almost all cases, there are exceptions to everything. If, you're, if you have high cholesterol, it's because you're eating too many animal products. But it doesn't just hit your heart. Erectile dysfunction is a precursor of heart disease. The vessels in that part of the body are smaller. And then you have the vessels up here. Now you find dementia. Is it, is it, have you noticed how everybody's parents seem to have dementia coming yeah. on? Okay. Yeah. Because it's systemic. It's all the vessels in your body are getting clogged. Right. And yet you try to tell people this and they laugh in your face because we are also being factory farmed. They need us to get fat, sick, and nearly dead so they can make money off of treating us. You can't make money off a disease that never happened. You can't do a surgery when you don't need stents. Right. The only way you're going to end up needing them is this horrible diet. It's not just me saying it. Newsweek magazine said our toxic food. I mean, the healthcare costs, the pandemic, um, everything. It, it, it impacts everything. So this is why we started Unchained TV. Right. Because people need to hear the truth. They need to see the truth. It's not, it's not getting out. It's just not you. getting out. Two questions. Why do you think it's not getting out? And what has been your biggest challenge trying to make these changes? Well, it's not getting out because as I mentioned, and I think it bears repeating, so thank you for asking, the major institutions of our society have been co-opted by industry. I don't call it capitalism. I call it corporate welfare. When, when um, meat and dairy, the commodity crops that people don't know, 75% of soy is fed to farmed animals. Okay. So when the commodity crops, the giant farmers are subsidized, that is subsidizing hamburgers. Okay. Subsidizing chicken wings, subsidizing so government has been co-opted by this industry and the media has been co-opted by this industry because it's commercial based media. Right, the advertisers right. are keeping the lights on, the advertisers pay the bill. So people aren't getting the information. Luckily we have social media. Now uh, we probably wouldn't have started this if uh, Facebook, when we were about 2017, I believe, a few years ago, we were getting uh, we got 17 million views on Facebook. Oh my gosh, we would do stories about all this and they'd right. send it out to everybody. Well, their algorithms changed. So that's another thing is that the social media platforms change a lot. So now you, you can't get your story seen by as many people without doing a boost. 
which right. we do. We, we boost a lot of our stories, right. but right. the point is we're, we're, we need to use every technology and every platform available because the future of everybody on this planet, you, me, is at stake. We just had a water expert on last Monday, this past Monday. And he said, look, you know how we're going to go vegan as a culture? You're going to have to choose between, do you want a glass of water or do you want a hamburger? A hamburger uses 450 gallons of water. We are in a drought crisis here in Southern California where I'm sitting, there are water restrictions. Okay, I was watering my plants and somebody said, yeah, you know, there's water restrictions. I said, yeah, that's why I'm a vegan. I save at least 600 gallons of water per, per me per day. Probably a lot more if you right. consider that a meat burger is 450 gallons of water to produce. Wow. And he said, look, United States, with the rising temperatures and the drought, he said, it's not just drought, it's permanent drought, decertification, desertification, desertification. He said, it's not just a temporary drought that's going to, it's permanent drought. And he talked about, you know, the possibility of massive crop failures. Look, Sometimes people don't get it till it hits them. Right. Sometimes it has to be that bullet that hits them, God forbid, where they realize, wow, those AK-47s are dangerous. Right. Sometimes it has to be their own house going up in flames, tragically, before they realize climate change is real. Right. It's hitting every one of us, the rising temperatures, the water scarcity, the extreme weather phenomenon, okay? Planes are, hundreds of planes get canceled now because of extreme weather. Yeah, We're going to get to a point where our society is going, and the pandemics. Do you see what nature's saying? Nature's yeah. saying, go to your rooms, human race. You've been bad. Come out better or you're finished. Right. And it's not me saying it. David Attenborough, Sir David Attenborough did an incredible documentary that's on uh, streaming called Breaking Boundaries. You break those boundaries, there's no turning back. When the, when the ice caps melt, there's no turning back. Okay, so that's what we're doing right now. And there's one thing that's in the power of each and every one of us to do every day to reverse climate change, and that's eat a plant-based diet. The carbon footprint of a vegan meal is like this compared to the carbon footprint of a ham sandwich. Right. So, so there's just, you know, right now, there's just a small portion of the vegan community. Now it's coming along more and more. I mean, you know, it's, we're evolving because, you know, back in the day when I started being vegan, there was like, you had no choices. Like there was no, right. Like it was a, a, a veggie burger that tasted like cardboard from Costco, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, now it's great, you know? So do you think how many, you know, how many people do you think we need? You know, of course we need everybody, but let's say like we're at, what percentage do you think we can shift in the next 20 years? 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%? Like We're going to have to shift globally. It's going. What's going to happen uh, is either we go extinct or we're, you're going to go into a restaurant and meat will be the outlier. And the may, everything will be, I've already seen it here in LA. There are restaurants where I go and I go, this isn't a vegan restaurant, but everything here is vegan, like a juice bar, things of that nature. Right. Now, um, by the way, I want to say that one of the reasons why we make Unchained TV completely free and easy to download, you can download it on your phone. You just go to your app store, okay? And you just put in Unchained TV, voila, you don't have to give your email, nothing, no personal right. information because we're right. just about getting this out. It's like, it's like we've printed out this leaflet. We're here, read this. Your life depends on it. Yeah. But there's hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of documentaries, vegan cooking shows, award-winning vegan cooking shows, all the information you need on here to make the transition. And it's fun. It's not a sacrifice. Um, so what's going to happen is I believe, this is just my personal belief, that cell-based meat is a huge answer. Right. Because with the artificial uh, lowering of the meat prices by the co-opted uh, government, the food bill that just huge subsidies to meat and dairy. And then you have people going, well, you know, veganism is for elites because it's so expensive. It's only expensive because <laughs> they're not subsidizing it. They're subsidizing the meat. Right. But cell-based meat, essentially organs on a chip. Okay. So they could take the organ of chicken breasts 
how a lot of people eat meat and they can have a vat four times the size of this room and just get the essential ingredients that go into that uh, and they can mass produce it, it's going to be approximately the price of sugar water. That's going to be, I think, the big game changer, technology. Yeah. And basically, what we have to realize is that meat, okay, is basically just vegetables that are processed through the body of an animal. And we don't need to kill the animal, raise the animal, destroy the planet in order to get that same ingredient because what they've done is they've identified the six or seven very small amount of ingredients that really go into what is considered meat, like heme gives it the taste and the smell and the blah, blah, blah. Right. So they, they assemble it on a chip and then they use those plants to mass produce it. Now, some people go, ooh, lab meat. Well, we don't want to call it lab meat. We want to call it clean meat. Uh, yeah. We want to call it the future of food. Uh, we are very close to having that in a in a few years that is going it already was served in uh I believe singapore they they served um clean chicken from a lab uh and it was this whole big thing covered in the media and people ate it and said yeah it's chicken it's right. just doesn't go through the animal that i believe is going to be uh, the ultimate um breakthrough yeah I agree with you because that that that's what starts to tap into the masses now, and people are becoming more conscious now. But it's being able to give as many choices as we can, just like your channel does. It's a, giving people more choices to find out what's going on. That's the key. So, yes. go ahead. No, I say people always say, "Well, it's a choice. It's a personal choice." To which I say, "Everything's a personal choice." A person who commits a horrible crime, they're making a personal choice, but it's not just a personal choice, okay? Any more than driving the wrong way down the freeway. Yes, that's a personal choice, but it's not just a personal choice. So that's a complete cop-out argument. Or as my dad used to say, freedom isn't shouting fire in a crowded movie theater. You know, there are consequences to our choices. That's why there are rules. That's why there are red lights. Uh, so the whole personal choice argument is when you think about it for 30 seconds, a complete crock. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Awesome. So I know you got another interview to get going to, so we're going to let you go because I could talk to you forever because you're a wealth <laughs> of information. So I know I could ask like 30, 50 more questions. So where can they all find you at websites, social media, all that kind of stuff. And I yeah. really highly suggest everybody you go watch their stuff, sign up for their stuff because they're doing such good in the world. Remember, they're also, you guys, non-profit. So help them. Thank you. You can go to unchainedtv.com. If you hit this QR code, you can go right to uh, our website and then you can watch it on a laptop. You can watch the app on a laptop under Watch Now. It's right there. We have the first three episodes of Pay Little Lies, which is absolutely adorable up already streaming and every friday a new episode drops and we have music videos and cooking shows you know i'm 27 years sober and before i got sober uh i thought well if i quit drinking i'll never go to a party again i'll never karaoke again i'll never watch the sunset again i'll never 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 and that was just all my projection and i still go to parties and i still make a fool of myself but now i remember it <laughs> um, it's the same thing with giving up meat. You know, it's not a sacrifice. All your projections of I will never this, I will never that. It's all nonsense. Today, everything that is made in through animals, whether it's eggs or cheese, can be is available, even in your any supermarket at this point. And it's there. So make the transition. Start bringing in that oat milk or soy milk or almond milk, whichever one you want. And some people go, well, I tried that and I didn't like it. Well, do you like every single piece of meat that you have ever eaten? Um, find the one you like. I have a certain preferred uh, oat milk that I like in my coffee that makes the coffee taste best. Yeah, so yeah. find the products that you enjoy and start yeah. using them and have fun with it. 
there's more versatility in cooking plant-based because we only kill about six animals, six different types of animals, whereas there are tens of thousands of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains that you can play around with in the kitchen and have fun with. And our Unchained TV, we have hundreds of cooking. We can show you how to make a tofu that looks like a steak, a mushroom that looks like a hamburger, uh, uh, cauliflower for chicken wings. It, it's, it's actually fun to do these things in the kitchen. So check it out, Unchained TV free. You can also, if you have a TV or Apple TV device, just Apple TV, Roku device, Amazon Fire Stick, if you have an LG or a Samsung smart TV, you just put this in there, pops right up. And once it's there, it's just there like HBO and Showtime and all the other apps. Well, I'm going to add it on my smart TV. Yeah. And everybody else should too. Thank you so much. I love what you guys are doing. Again, I encourage everybody to go check them out and pass the word along because they're really doing good work. They're really in it for the right reasons. And that's how we all have to come together. And we have to support people that are in this for the right reasons. It's the only way we're gonna create change in the world. Well, thank you. I wanna thank you for having me on Shane and uh, for being compassionate yourself and uh, for, for being an example of how compassion is a fun lifestyle. 100% and you can build a whole company around compassion. All yes, right, everybody. Yeah. All right, honey, thank, thank you. Thank you, talk soon, bye-bye. Okay, bye.